And I was sitting there in my boxer shorts and the money just started piling in like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. And then, boom. Sure, this is gonna be the end of my company. I had to take out all the bottlenecks and I was the biggest bottleneck. Hi, my name is Peter Stettler and welcome to Stettler Made. Five years ago, I decided I wanted to create a product that enabled anybody to make amazing wood-fired pizzas in their own backyard. And that's the outdoor oven that we sell worldwide and that we make with the whole Stettler Made team right here in the Netherlands. I was studying the Eindhoven at the Design Academy and as a side project I was uh, making little pizza ovens in my backyard just for fun, just to experiment with making different ovens myself. So I started with flower pots, I started claying little ovens, then I made my first oven out of concrete. Every time I invited my friends, they were like, hey Peter, this is amazing, you should do something with it. The idea started growing in my head. And at one point, I decided to really put it into production and start a company selling my own made outdoor ovens. We have a graduation show on my school. I thought, okay, I will just use my oven to graduate with it. So I opened a pop-up restaurant in Eindhoven called the Pizza Bar. Here I had four of the ovens that I made, the only four I had. We thought we would sell a few pizzas, but in the end it was crazy. People would line up. We sold more than a thousand pizzas uh, in one week. And also there was a curator of a show in uh, Paris. So he invited me to come to Paris and showcase my oven. A few weeks later, I took my old car. I drove to Paris. And at the end of the week, I had like an order for 60 ovens. While I only had four prototypes. And apparently in Paris, somebody else from a show in Milan saw my products, had another exhibition, started making pizza for Italians. That was a nice challenge because, of course, they are the most critical public that you can have. <laughs> but really, they really loved it, so that was super cool. And then I got more orders, so I came back very happy, but also pretty stressed because I had no idea how to produce these. Every day I'm covered in concrete, concrete in my nose, concrete in my hair. And then in the nighttime I have to do all the invoices and the mailing. And I did that for one year, which was amazing. But at the end of the year I was like... So I was thinking, how can I scale up and how can I make this company bigger and better to manage? I came up with this new idea, an oven that is that you can assemble yourself, that we can flat pack, that we can ship all over the world without too much hassle. But I needed money. I needed money to start the first production round. So I went to banks, I went to all kinds of places, but nobody uh, could lend me that, that amount of money. So that's when I decided to do a crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter. So I hired a girl from my school. I put all my last savings into hiring her. Together we made a video, we made a story. Hi, my name is Peter Stettler. I am a maker. Also, I'm the founder and proud owner of Stettler Made. And then we went live on Kickstarter. So 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting there in my boxer shorts and I press on launch. Just stared at the screen and the money just started piling in like, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. And I was sitting there in my boxer shorts. I sat like cramped with my face in front of the screen for like 20 minutes. I wanted to stand up, but I just heard it because I was so cramped up. I was so like, I, I didn't know what I was feeling. I was overcome with joy, but it was also very scary because I was like, damn, that's a lot of ovens I start have to make now. My goal, my initial goal was 6,000 euros. And in the end, it became 102,000 euros in one month. 
So yeah, basically when you do something like that, it's very, it's not organic. You know, it's like you're, 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 you're boosting your whole company. Basically you're growing out of proportions a little bit. Scale up everything, you have to hire new people. You have to put systems in place. And then of course you make a profit. And with that profit, I could buy a new stock again, new inventory. So we basically spent a whole year catching up to get to the, to the right level. And then when we got to the right level, I thought it was time for a second product. So that was the outdoor oven 2.0. That was an oven that you could open up and then also grill in it. I did another Kickstarter. This time I raised 100,000 in 10 minutes and then another 100,000 in the rest of the month. So that was mind blowing. But there were a few design flaws in there. Everything that I didn't want to do with my initial oven happened with the second oven. We had to do construction here, we had to have bigger packaging, we had to have bigger warehousing. And in the end, that also made the product more expensive. But because of Kickstarter, I already sold the products for X amount, only now the price went up. So in the end, I got a 200,000 euros in, but I ended up with a um, loss of 50,000. So that was a very stressful moment for me. That was, that was the most stressful moment. The worst case scenario would be that I would stop the company and that I would just have to get some kind of job to pay back that 50,000. And for me, of course, it would be horrible, you know? You have this team and you have a dream. So you just, you know, just took the debt and I made the big decision to stop selling that 2.0. And I had to hope for a good season to get me out of that debt situation. I needed to make a plan, so we, we started making tutorials. How to make pizza dough, how to shape your pizza dough, uh, everything around pizza. How to sauce like a boss in three steps. How to canotto. Creating all those gases, aromas and other greatness. Uh, don't forget to check out my other tutorials and see you later. Peace. And then, boom, Corona hit. And it was like zero sales. I was like, damn, like I already got that 50,000 hanging over me. And now it's Corona. I was like, sure, this is going to be the end of my company. It was scary for a couple of weeks. And then people started getting used to that new situation. People couldn't travel anymore. They couldn't go to restaurants and they started looking around. That was the same time I started promoting my YouTube videos. So that is when everything exploded and I got like millions of views on my YouTube videos and the business started booming again. So that 50,000 was gone in no time and it was the best year we ever did. So for me, growth is a beautiful thing. If the company grows, it means that the people inside the company can grow. And since the beginning, I've been telling myself, this company is just a vehicle for my growth. And along the way, it became also a vehicle for other people's growth. So now I'm looking at how do you want to make yourself better? And if you look at that and focus on that and the person in your company, then automatically the company will grow. And I don't even have to give targets. I just look at the people and see how I can help them improve. And then the rest just happens automatically. So that's growth for me. And that's the, the growth that I feel comfortable with and that makes me happy. <laughs>